G'day, I'm Goose and welcome to day four of GG at E3. Two down, one to go, we know what we're doing, roll the titles. Okay, another day, another pilgrimage to the showroom floor. Uh, where have you been all day? Oh, Goose, today I hung out with old mate Kratos ah. and interviewed a couple of God of War devs. Yep. And it was really good. Like, I didn't realize they're changing quite a lot for this God of War. Like, you've got this axe now as the main weapon. Mm -hmm. So all the combat's going to be quite different. And I think they're going to pare back the quick timey stuff a little bit and That's evolve probably for that. the best. Yeah, I think so too. But what I was really excited about, which I didn't notice in the trailer, they've changed the camera angle. <laughs> okay, this is like a dramatic shift from. I guess he's always kind of in the middle. The middle rolling about, you know. And now they've got the really trendy over shoulder kind of wobble. But look. the reason they're doing it is really interesting because they want to bring you a, a more emotional story. They want you to connect more with him and what he's doing. And you've also got the son there too. So the son's a part of it. He can order the son to do stuff. So I'm even more excited about God of War now, thinking that it might be like a Naughty Dog Uncharted kind of experience. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so you started with a strong game. I actually took to the showroom floor, uh, and I was kind of curious about who the people that attend E3 were. So I did some shoulder tapping, oh, yeah. uh, went up and down a lot of the lines, and was just sort of asking people what their job was and how they got to E3. It was really interesting. Uh, we got a whole range of people from sort of guys who just work in IT. Uh, we spoke to some students. Uh, I actually ran into some kids who were just getting around. I was like, how are you here if you're that young? And so we went up and asked them. Yeah. Turns out that they knew someone in the industry, but they'd borrowed a pass and then they'd... They snuck in. They'd snuck in. Um, <laughs> and he said he got turned away the first time. Yeah. And then he actually just went and put on a pair of sunglasses and put his head down <laughs> and got in. And I was like... It's all about the confidence. Just yeah, go for it. You walk the walk, you get in there. So it was actually kind of eye-opening just seeing who the people at E3 were. Yeah, there were a lot of people. There's there a were lot. a lot of queues. Uh, I queued up for a lot of stuff today, which yep. um, we don't normally get time to play games, but there were just some things I had to play. And one of them was Resident Evil VR. <laughs> Uh, uh, it was spooky. You would not like it. No. It was too spooky for Goose. I pass. I don't want to queue up for that. I'm glad you did that instead. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pumped for it because you can play it um, with VR the whole way through or without VR the whole way through. Good, so okay. It does, it's not an experience. It's the whole game and it was pretty spooky. Yeah, right. Well, you were talking about that yesterday and so this is one of those full games that's yeah. out there. Yeah, so that's exciting. I did get motion sickness though. Pretty okay. bad. I almost vomited on we the VR We still haven't unit. solved this problem, have <laughs> no. we? Right. Um, so actually after that I left the expo hall and I went and checked out a thing called E3 Live, which was a public event. Um, I gotta say, I was pretty disappointed. It was basically just a bunch of shops outside selling a bunch of crap or big queues again, but you're outside yeah. in direct sunlight. So this was one of these things that they're starting this year to see if the public wants to get interested. Look, there were a lot of people there and they were interested, just wasn't really for me. So I was kind of happy to get out of there. Yeah, that sounds a bit lame. They should just do like a few days for the public in the event itself. That would make perfect sense. That would solve the problem. Yeah. We wouldn't have to deal with it. It would be perfect. Hmm. Um, unfortunately, after leaving there, I got totally lost. So I've lost Gus. He's um he's run off with his mic pack on though, and I'm using the uh, I'm using his signal, his receiver signal. Ah, uh, left. Left. Huh? Yeah, he, so, you can hear him. He's directing are. me now. No, right. He's directing me now. Right. Left. Hey. Straight ahead. Hey. Yeah. Hey. 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 Hugs. Hugs. Crisis averted, moral of that story, always wear a radio mic. Hmm. Uh, but then we moved on and actually got a chance to speak with a bit of a hero, Steve Mayles, who was the designer of Ukulele. And he was sort of responsible for characters in the past like Banjo-Kazooie and Dixie Kong. So it was really kind of amazing talking to him. What was the most amazing part of it was talking about the character design he's done in the past. Hmm. He just kind of like nonchalantly just talked about, oh, I just drew these little characters and uh, I didn't like that one, so I scrunched that one up and tried another one until he created these like classic characters that we know and love. Just talent, just spewing out talent. Yeah, I was, a little, I was a bit jealous, to be honest, <laughs> but he was still such a lovely guy. He was exhausted, yeah. uh, which always makes it a bit tricky to talk about a really beautiful, lovely game. They do get very tired because they're doing the same interview over and over again. I had the COD Infinite Warfare guy in today, and he was awesome. Like, he had, yeah. some, had some great things to say, but he was so perfect, like, back of the box, perfect, with each <laughs> bullet point. Like, he's rehearsed this so well. In fact, it was super impressive. At one point, I wanted to talk about the previous game he worked on, because he worked on one of the Tomb Raider games, or I think maybe both of them, and still, within three words, he turned it back to COD. He could make everything about COD if he had to. Yeah. That's his job. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive at the same time. Uh, look, the interview with Steve was really lovely as well, though, and we actually got a chance to ask him a couple of questions that you guys sent in. Uh, okay, first question comes from Jack Osaurus, and he'd like to know how many worlds or levels are there in the game, and is there a level unlocking system like the Jiggies back in Banjo-Kazooie? Absolutely, yes, there is a level unlocking system. So you're, you're collecting um, pages this time, so that's, that's the way you'll unlock the world. 
but you've got a choice how you use those pages. So you can either um, use them to effectively unlock um, an existing world, expand that world, okay. or if you want a lot like, 100% of world, that's what you'll do. Or you can um, use them to unlock a new world. Are they going to be as adorable as the Ds? Do they oh, have some personality? I, I think so they do. They have, okay. eye, they have eyes and a mouth. That's so. all they need. That's all. Excellent. And a voice. Meep, 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 meep. Is that your. Do you voice it? I try. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is from Enquest63 and would like to know uh, are there any favourite Easter eggs that you've put in ukulele currently? Anything semi secret or that. Or is there just something you've hidden to the side? <laughs> Mm, well, some of our background artists, they are a little bit naughty, so they do try to sneak these <laughs> Easter eggs in. Good. And we keep telling them not to, but they can't help themselves. So I think sometimes the first time we see of it is a few months down the line when we spot something hidden in the background. <laughs> so, so who knows what's lurking. So you're like the parents and you're like pointing out all the things <laughs> so, they're yeah, trying to sneak by. It can be like that. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and finally, the last one is from Rob Bollingmore, and he'd like to know, how did you come up with the idea of two main characters? Um, I, I think about characters that are um, not very well represented in games. Yep. <laughs> Funny enough, sure. during, during the Kickstarter, there someone said, "Ah, what about this um, N64 game? Is like Chameleon Twist?" Yes, I remember that and one. And even had a sequel. And I think of chameleons in like just just animated films. I'm thinking hmm, there was one in a uh, Tangled, Tangled Pascal, yeah. I think it was called. But apart from that, and they're such cool characters. They are. And so you're bringing a resurgence of the chameleon back exactly. to the gaming world. Exactly. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing the game and playing it as well. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Well, that's pretty much everything from day four of GG at E3. But before we go, we thought we'd throw in a little treat. We've been living in this place now for a couple of days. We've pretty much made it our home, haven't we? Mm -hmm. There's a good stank in the air. Yeah, so we thought we'd give you guys a quick guided tour. Uh, are you ready for this? I am ready. Let's okay, do it. Let's go. <clears throat> now, you've obviously first seen our set, uh, which we've dressed accordingly with a lot of E3 junk. There's uh, producer extraordinaire Lynn over there. Say hi, Lynn. Okay, then moving through past Pete, the cameraman for the show, uh, into his bedroom, which is this lovely king-sized bed right here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a room that big. Uh, I literally got the closet. <laughs> I'm sleeping in a closet. Uh, I do like to keep it quite neat, though, which everyone keeps making fun of me about. Uh, there's our bathroom. Uh, and then moving past our lovely kitchen full of American food and heading up the loft stairs. <sighs> We have Lynn's loft apartment, where are all the smells rise to uh, over the day. Okay, Bajo, back to you. Ready for this? Don't you, don't you do it. Ready? There we no. go. Oh, there! I caught something for the first time in my life. Give me some pretzels. Give me some pretzels. Oh, Give me some pretzels. Oh, all right. Okay, so, um, in this part of the room is JP. Hi, JP. Hello. Backing up your cards. Hi. That's my face. Nice. Bye, JP. His, his room smells nice. This is my room. Um, bit of a mess. Not much going on here. Mm, drying some clothes in the cupboard. Uh, that's, a, that's about it. You might have seen my underpants then. I apologize for that. Bathroom, nothing much interesting in there. Um, that's kind of... What's going on? <laughs> we have a disco ball. I discovered we have a disco ball. ball. We have a disco. We should, we should start dancing. This could be the thing we used for the last episode. Yeah. Well, uh, that's pretty much our tour. There we go. Uh, so remember to check back for the final episode of GG at E3 tomorrow. But until then, uh, goose out, barge her out, and good night. Well, not good night. Which time do we turn off the lights? This is going to get annoying. <laughs> How many lights do we have? <laughs>